This is the story of Flybe Flight 130. On the 11th of January 2018, a Flybe-8 was to fly from Belfast City Airport to Glasgow International Airport. Flying was not something that the captain of Flight 130 was planning on doing that day. You see, he was on standby, and at the last moment, he got the call that he would have to fly. So he immediately made his way from Aberdeen to Glasgow City. At the airport, he met his first officer for the day. This would be their first time flying together, and both of them did not fly in and out of Belfast very often. But the weather was quite good for the time being, and so neither pilot expected anything too challenging today. In the cockpit, the two pilots prepped for the takeoff. They decided that the captain would be the one flying the first two legs for the day, and then the first officer would take over. The first flight of the day from Glasgow to Belfast was uneventful. The Dash 8 made a smooth touchdown on runway 22 at Belfast, and the pilots got to work turning the plane around for the next flight back to Glasgow. As the plane evacuated the runway, the first officer was busy with his after landing checklist. The plane taxied and got on the stand a whole five minutes ahead of schedule. Not too shabby for the first flight of the day. Now that they had gotten the plane on the ground, they now had to get the plane ready for the flight back. The captain walked around the plane conducting a visual check while the first officer programmed the flight management systems. Since the weight of the plane would change on the ground at Belfast, a new load sheet had to be printed out. All of this went by without a hitch, and within no time, they were ready for the flight back. The controllers gave Flight 130 its clearance. They would have to climb and maintain 3,000 feet after taking off, and so they programmed all of that into the autopilot. With the new load sheet information programmed in, the pilot started the pushback, and Flight 130 was on its way to the runway. As the engines roared to life, the flaps were set to 5, and the plane made its way to the holding line of runway 22. It was then cleared onto the runway so that it could bat track and then line up and take off. As they approached the threshold of runway 22, the captain went over their clearance again. He said, 3000 with altitude select. They then started to turn the plane around on the runway to line up. Just as they lined up, the taxi checklist was completed. In the cockpit, the pilots were busy communicating with controllers, doing the after charge checks, and prepping the cabin for departure. Complicating all of this was the fact that another airplane might be on arrival, so they needed to take off soon, or someone else would have to go around and they would be mad. They then moved on to the lineup checklist. After that was done, they got their takeoff clearance. The pilot started the takeoff roll and the dash hit picked up speed, and then it took off into the Belfast sky. Right after takeoff, the LNAV mode was selected on the autopilot. This meant that the autopilot would fly the plane along a pre-planned path. The plane climbed away, and as soon as it was at 1,000 feet of altitude, the rate of climb was very much healthy. As the plane climbed, it got engulfed in clouds. The crew were now in IMC, or Instrument Meteorological Conditions. Now that the plane was safely climbing away, the pilots turned on the autopilot to reduce their workload just a little bit. After a while, though, something weird started to happen. The plane was no longer climbing. The nose started to drop at about 1.2 degrees per second. But the crew were too busy with the after takeoff checklist. Over a couple of seconds, the pitch of the plane went from 10 degrees nose up to about 8 degrees nose down. With that, they started descending. The plane was picking up speed and no one on the flight deck seemed to notice. The plane reached 4,300 feet per minute of descent. Then the plane broke through that critical altitude where alarms would start shouting at the pilots. The automated warning system just said, don't sink at 1,300 feet. The captain wasted no time. He immediately disconnected the autopilots and pulled back power on the engines, and pulled back on the yoke as hard as he could. But planes have a lot of momentum behind them, and so it takes them a while to pull out from a dive. So the plane continued its descent. In the meantime, the don't sink warning was now replaced with a more stern pull up. The clouds had now given way to the ground. They needed to pull up right now. Then at 928 feet, the plane started pulling up out of the dive and out of danger. They put the plane back into a climb, and they gained back some of the altitude that they had lost. When they got to 1,900 feet, they turned the autopilot on again, and then the plane again started to pitch down. The captain immediately disconnected the autopilot and said, It's going to alt hold again. It's going to pitch down. The pilots then increased the airspeed on the console all the way to 210 knots, and then they cautiously re-engaged the autopilot to see if something would go wrong. Nothing happened this time around. They got the plane up to 3,000 feet, and ATC was a bit concerned, understandably. They were like, are you guys okay? And the pilots just said that they had an issue with the autopilot and that it was resolved. They then made an uneventful landing at Glasgow. The pilots and the passengers must have been shaken a bit, but 
they were okay. Now, to understand what happened on flight 130, we need to look at the autopilot system of the Dash 8. The autopilot has a few modes that it uses when it comes to altitude. You have the altitude select mode, which causes the autopilot to acquire and maintain a selected altitude. So for example, if you punch in 3000 and put the plane in altitude select mode, the plane will climb or descend down to 3000 feet. When the plane gets near 3000 feet, it goes into the alt star mode or the altitude capture mode, which basically levels the plane off. This then neatly brings us to the altitude or alt hold mode, which maintains the selected altitude. Now usually the alt mode is engaged by default when the alt star mode is done leveling off the plane. When that happens, the target altitude for the alt mode is set to the plane's current altitude, rounded to the nearest 100 feet. One last bit of information. The AFCS or the Automatic Flight Control System logic allows the alt and the alt select mode to be turned on at the exact same time. In this case, the altitude mode will be engaged while the altitude select will be armed. Now, on the accident flight, before takeoff, the captain primed the autopilot as follows. He selected the go around mode, the heading mode, and the altitude select mode. This meant that the flight directors would give him pitch up commands to get up to 3000 feet and then level off, and then fly the given heading. Here's the problem though, the captain did all of this before he entered their target altitude of 3000 feet into the autopilot. Here's the weird thing, testing showed that if you did this, then something weird happened to the autopilot settings. The altitude select mode that the pilot had selected would get deselected and it would go into the alt or altitude mode. And what happens in the altitude mode? The autopilot generates commands to maintain the current altitude of the plane. Since the plane is on the ground, that altitude is zero. Now, right before takeoff, the captain almost caught the problem during the pre-takeoff checklist. He was calling out what was on the flight mode enunciator, and he just said, go around, heading, alt, wait. Why isn't it alt cell? That's better, yeah. And then he changes it, or that's what he thinks. But the modes had not changed. Here's a quote from the report. Quote, when the final item on the checklist was reached, which was to check the FMA and the caution warning panel, the commander stated that the flight director modes were set to go around heading and altitude select. However, the selected modes were subsequently found to have been set to alt, heading, and altitude select. End quote. So, when the plane was in the air, the autopilot was engaged and the commands that were being generated was the plane to go to the target altitude, and that target altitude was zero feet. This is why the plane pitched down each time when the autopilot was engaged. What's really interesting is that this wasn't the first time that this had happened. Flybe looked through its records and found three other instances of exactly this happening. On the 3rd of January 2017, a flight from Glasgow to Belfast dropped by 150 feet due to the same issue. On the 12th of May 2017, another Dash 8 from Edinburgh to Southampton dropped by 130 feet. On the 19th of July 2017, a Dash 8 from Exeter to Manchester almost had this issue, but the crew caught the mistake before it was too late. So, in the end, all of this happened because the crew selected the flight director modes on the autopilot without inputting a target altitude and this mistake went uncaught. But the biggest changes from this accident were the changes to the taxi checklist. Then, crews were actually warned that something like this could actually happen. And finally, changes were made to the simulator training that pilots received so that they can deal with this better if this were to happen in them out in the real world. This could have been the perfect recipe for disaster. They were in interim meteorological conditions and it could have spiraled out of control very quickly, literally. But the quick action of the captain was exactly what needed to be done. He wasn't confused or startled, and his training kicked in immediately. He did what needed to be done, and because of that, 48 people lived to tell the tale. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.